This is Jay Deshari. Uh, Jay Deshari, physical therapist, uh, director of the Center for Endurance Sport at University of Virginia. And this is Mike Smeda. Very good. My name is Mike Smeda. I'm a, uh, I guess a graduate student at the University of Virginia studying aerospace engineering. Jay's job is fixing injured runners. Mike, the middle distance runner on the Ragged Mountain racing team, is an injured runner. Achilles problems. We're here to see one way modern science is being used to heal runners and prevent future injuries. An individual came in today uh, with a history of, um, uh, you know, basically some chronic Achilles pain. Um, basically, he had issues kind of on and off again for about a year, and uh, kind of manifested, got increased sometimes, decreased sometimes, not only a predictive pattern, um, but generally got worse. And then one day, basically said, you know, if I have instant shock pain in my heel, can't run, have to stop, quit this workout today. One day, I just went to go warm up for a workout, and everything was feeling fine, and then about five or six minutes into the workout it started to bother me and then over the course of the next five minutes or so it became excruciatingly painful and unable to, couldn't really walk on it, or definitely not run on it, so I didn't do the workout that day and then it just, it hasn't really healed very quickly. So. Basically what he has a combination of is some Achilles tendinosis, um, so basically strain problems with the Achilles tendon, and, uh, and had some problems with the bursitis, and a bursa is just a little fluid filled sac that became inflamed and irritated. I went to go see uh, Dr. Wilder. Uh, the pedic. I guess he's a foot and I'm not exactly sure what he does. He's a uh, Dr. Bob Wilder, um, chair of the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation at the University of Virginia, medical director of the Runners Clinic, as well as the Center for Endurance Sport. And he put me on anti inflammatories, uh, which helped with the pain for a while, but obviously didn't really fix the problem. Uh, I guess we were kind of hoping that it would fix itself and go away, but unfortunately it didn't. So then I took some time off. And then tried coming back, but I think I came back a little bit too strong, and then it started bothering me again, so I took some more time off. But to get that condition better, you need to rest the bursa. It has to basically calm down a little bit, so he took some time off. I have to strengthen the Achilles tendon, which he did, uh, and he did a bunch of eccentric activity, eccentric exercises, which are great. Those are lengthening contractions. This is when Mike booked an appointment with Jay at the Center for Endurance Sport, not quite a year after his initial injury. These appointments analyze a runner's form in three ways, a visual assessment, an objective gait analysis, and a clinical exam. After warming up and calibrating the force plates and infrared, Smeda begins his running evaluation, lasting about seven minutes for him at six minute pace. So here at UVA, we have a, a, we're really lucky to have a, a nice lab, and so we're able to use um, cameras that look at range of motion, and we use uh, treadmill uh, and force plates to look at, uh, at forces acting on the body. So we have 12 infrared cameras around the room. They're not video cameras, they're infrared cameras. They don't see you visually. What they do is actually uh, bounce reflections off of the markers that's on the runner's body, 
and then that uh, reflection goes back into the camera so that we can reconstruct in three dimensions the runner's pelvis, spine, hips, ankles, knees, feet, etc. And so we actually recreate those as points in, in 3D space and we can measure the range of motion that they have. And we like to, uh, we, we collect uh, data at 250 hertz or 250 times a second we're looking for where is that person and how are they moving. Uh, the treadmill that we have is one of a handful in, in the world that exists. It allows us to look at forces in three planes in real time. So it allows us to look a thousand times per second at the forces acting on the runner. Uh, you think about the, the planes of motion. Uh, we, we run the sagittal plane, okay, um, and then we also uh, look at the lateral plane, and we also look at rotational plane. So what it allows us to do is to get data on, uh, on, on forces in the anterior posterior direction, on the planes you run in, it allows us to look at lateral forces, rotational forces, and also vertical component forces. So again, it gives us a complete picture of what kind of forces are acting on you as you run. We can see are things asymmetric, are things efficient. Um, as a number of performance variables we've sort of figured out, um, work with the USA track and field to break a runner down and figure out, okay, where are they accelerating, where are they braking, how can we sort of get this data to, to, to tell something meaningful. Um, I think it's one of the things we've done here is that, you know, we get a lot of data, uh, any lab gets a lot of data, the, the critical step is to make the range of motion data and make the force data you collect actually meaningful and applicable to the runner. Tomato finishes his run. While the engineer processes the data, Jay takes Mike into the back room for a clinical evaluation. There he correlates what he observed during the gait evaluation with the physical musculature and skeletal structure of the athlete. So get your balance first. So the idea is you want to basically have the ball of the foot down on the ground. When you stand on single leg balance, you sort of do this. The ball kind of just pops up back and forth. Okay. When I ask you to close your eyes, the very first thing that happens is First, you shift here. You basically just come off the other side of the foot. So you're using what I call reactive balance instead of proactive balance. Okay, so reactive balance means you're basically just kind of flopping around like this. Proactive balance means you actually can stabilize. You know what to do. So you have to teach you how to get your forefoot down. Why is this important? Well, it's really simple. Um, you two things we're able to really focus on. Uh, with him is that uh, his foot tendons tends to land uh, a little bit differently. It lands a little bit uh, more, which we call it an everted position, a little bit more uh, inside of the foot down. Uh, and he lacks him uh, a certain amount of range of motion to roll off the ball of the foot. So because of that, he's unstable from a muscular standpoint, so he can't stabilize the foot very well in the stance phase, which is when you have to control your body. And uh, the limitation of range of motion sort of forced him to roll off the outside edge of the foot. Um, so if you combine the fact of you know a, a, a different type of motion occurring in the foot that he can't control, you wind up with with uh, imbalances again in that lateral plane uh, that are really, really critical for him. So a, a big part of our component for, for Mike today was trying to strengthen him, uh, you know, to get that lateral stability, lateral control of the foot and ankle um, to basically fix the cause. Now the uh, we also saw an effect with with our runner today too. Um, you know, he has a lot of medial lateral shift of his shoulders and actually sort of sort of leans to to the, to the right side a good bit. And he's doing that to sort of take stress off the left ankle because he's had chronic problems with that. Um, that's more of an effect. Okay, we see it. It's actually pretty prominent. In fact, you don't really need the system to just to see. Oh, he's wobbling to one side. It's pretty visible. Uh, but the idea is uh, that you know he's doing that because of problems down below the foot and ankle. So we correct the issues of the foot and ankle. And I don't expect that the issues up top just magically go away because he's practiced and run that way for you know past couple of months. So those habits are ingrained. So my goal is to you know, also add in some hip stability exercises to make sure he's aware of his posture when he's running. To make sure he's aware of that lateral control. And that's how we're going to fix both the issues. When the objective data is ready, Jay goes over that information with Mike. He uses this data to connect what he observed with his clinical assessments to determine the causes of the runner's injury or inefficiencies and to formulate a plan to correct those problems.
be spent your calves, but I think most of the videos you guys should be searching for. Stand, and we're gonna go toe, heel, toe, heel, just like this. Okay. So you're supposed to be across it? Yep, you're working 45 degrees. When I ask you what sets your uh, your lab set up apart from everybody else, what do you say? I guess that would be the time to say ours goes to 11. <laughs> yeah. It sums up right we, there. <laughs> we can certainly come up with some other Maybe, yeah, more, more, more meaningful relevant. <laughs> information for our readers.